When Randy Bass and Alex Ramirez were inducted into the Japanese Baseball Hall of Fame, they became the fourth and fifth foreign-born players to be enshrined within its halls. When it was announced, a lot of the MPB community was ecstatic. The hope was that other foreign stars would finally get the honor that they deserved. Daryl Spencer, Gene Bach, Greg Boomer Wells, Taiwan Kuo, Tuffy Rhodes, and others who suffered snub after snub despite being more than deserving. The three men who came before Bass and Ramirez were no sledges themselves. Wallace Kanameyonamine spent four decades around NPB and remains one of the most highly respected players in Japanese baseball history. And Tadashi Henry Wakabayashi is one of the most important figures in the history of both the Hanshin Tigers and Chiba Lotte Marines. But the first one is one of baseball's most interesting men. A man who could not catch a break. A man who seemingly had every hardship life could throw at him, and sadly, eventually cracked. But all the while, he took the mound with a presence and grace like few others before or since, and etched his place into the fabric of the Japanese game forevermore. Baseball's tragic hero, Viktor Konstantinovich Starkin, better known by the Western spelling of his name, Viktor Starfin. Viktor was born in the city of Nizhny Tagil, Russia, in 1916. When the Russian Civil War broke out a year later, his father, who'd been part of the provisional government, didn't like his chances of survival in what was mostly a working-class mining town, so he fled east, eventually making it to the city of Harbin, Manchuria. Because of security concerns, with members of the Cheka often kidnapping Russian refugees out of Harbin, the family eventually decided to move to Japan in 1925, settling in Asahikawa, Hokkaido. Konstantin started an import-export business, while Victor's mother, Evdokia, began working at a coffee shop known as Café Belorussia, later to be known as Café Baikal. Starfin was initially bullied by his classmates because he wasn't Japanese, but he studied the language intensely and was fluent within a couple years. He was also extremely athletic. In fact, it was once stated that if he and his classmates competed in a 100 meter dash, Starfin would still be able to win even if his classmates had a 20 meter head start. Part of this was because he was gigantic. By the age of 11, he was already 6 feet tall. For reference, the average height in Japan in 1927 was 5 foot 3. It translated well into baseball. Victor had discovered the sport shortly after moving to Japan and had become infatuated with it, using it as a way to both connect with his classmates and make new friends, as well as a way to distance himself from the rapidly worsening situation at home as his father Constantine had taken to heavy drinking. But in 1932, Victor's life would change forever. First off, Koyo High School in Kobe had scouted him, and the family briefly moved to Hyogo Prefecture so Victor could attend the school. The other big baseball schools in Hyogo Prefecture were less than pleased at the idea of Koyo bringing in a foreigner to pitch for them, so they complained to the district. The Starfin family returned to Hokkaido, and Starfin began to pitch for Asahikawa High School. Since he wasn't the only Russian refugee playing high school baseball in Hokkaido, nobody complained there. Secondly, his father went to prison. Konstantin Starfin had been seeing one of his wife's co-workers, a fellow Russian refugee named Maria, on the side. Maria, being a Menshevik, often got into explosive arguments with Konstantin about politics back home. During one of said arguments, Konstantin killed her in a drunken stupor. Or at least, that's what he claimed. In reality, Konstantin wasn't the only man Maria was seeing, and he was jealous. Can you spell hypocrite? Anyways, by framing it as an argument about politics, Konstantin took the stand to claim that he'd killed Maria because he thought she was a spy sent by the NKVD to monitor the Russian community on Hokkaido. It kinda worked, as Konstantin saw his charges reduced to manslaughter, and he only got 8 years in prison. Still, this was a big blow to Victor. One, Constantine had been the main breadwinner for the family, so now there was little money coming in. And two, since the family were immigrants, Victor and his mother were worried that they could be deported back to Russia. And thanks to his father's political alignments, most likely into the waiting arms of the NKVD. However, Victor did have the support of his friends and classmates, and their families did what they could to keep the Starfin family above water during this trying time. Both luckily and unluckily for Victor, someone else had taken notice of his talents. In 1934, the Tokyo Dainippon Baseball Club was formed, and Matsutaro Shoriki had invited a team of MLB All-Stars to come do a tour of Japan. Shoriki wanted to avoid the embarrassing defeats that previous Japan Challenge teams had suffered, and he had noticed Starfin's skill, seeing him as a secret weapon, a pitcher the Americans had never seen before, and someone who just might be able to power past them. However, Asahikawa residents wouldn't hear any of it. Starfin was their local star, a player who was going to get their high school to Koshen, and a player who they felt could help them win the whole thing. Shoriki immediately started looking for dirt. He found out that Konstantin Starfin was in jail for manslaughter, and let's just say, gently hinted that he could use his vast political influence to get Victor and his mother deported. 
Back against the wall, Victor reluctantly submitted the paperwork to drop out of high school, and he and his mother jumped on the train to Tokyo in the middle of the night so he could join the team. Starfin made his debut in the final game of the series at Omiya Park Stadium on November 29th, and threw two scoreless innings in the losing effort. Starfin impressed enough that he would be selected to the traveling team that was to do a North American tour, the tour that would give them the name the Tokyo Giants. But this would open up another issue. He didn't have a passport. Nor could he get one. In the 15 years since the Russian Civil War had run its course, most of the world had acknowledged the Soviet Union as their replacement to the Russian Empire, and it wasn't even like a Taiwan-China situation where countries accept Taiwanese passports without formally recognizing Taiwan. The Russian Empire just didn't exist. Furthermore, the fact that he'd been representing Japan without being ethnically Japanese upset many members of the far-right nationalist movement Genyosha, especially its leader, Mitsuru Toyama. Toyama was a pan-Asianist, and thought that Japan should be embarrassed to have a white man, let alone one who was the son of a criminal, represent the nation. Toyama tried to use his influence within the Tokyo Metropolitan Police to have him barred from leaving the country, but Shoriki, being a former policeman himself, was able to overrule Toyama's influence as well as negotiate with American and Canadian authorities to allow Starfin into those countries. During the tour, the main thing Starfin tried to focus on was control. While his large frame had given him the best fastball on the team, he often struggled to put it where he wanted to. This continued into his first pro season in 1936 in the new Japanese Professional Baseball League, drawing ire from many of his teammates. It got so bad at one point that Starfin, still only 20 years old, broke down crying on the mound in the middle of a game. Luckily, he was able to find a sympathetic soul in Giants manager Sadayoshi Fujimoto. Fujimoto was one of the many who understood Starfin's gargantuan potential, but he was one of the few who actually, you know, knew the best way to help him, which was actually support him. Fujimoto constantly worked with Starfin in the bullpens, honing his skills and eventually turning him from an effectively wild pitcher into just a flat-out effective one. So much so that by 1937, Starfin was the second best pitcher in the JPBL, trailing only his teammate, Aiji Sawamura. He also threw the third no-hitter in Japanese pro baseball history against the Karakuen Eagles at Susaki Stadium. And he also hit the first home run of his career off of Kozu Matsuo as his Giants routed the Nagoya Baseball Club 18-3 on October 7th. 1938 would see a new chapter of Starfin's career, as Aiji Sawamura got drafted and shipped off to China, leaving Starfin as the lone ace of the Giants. In the final year of the split season era, Starfin would go off. He went 33-5 with a 1.77 ERA, putting up 10.1 war, leading the JPBL by a wide margin. Then he did it again in 1939, setting a Japanese pro baseball record with 42 wins, striking out 282 batters, and winning his first MVP award. But something else happened in 1939, the Battle of Kalkan Gol in Mongolia. Immediately following the battle, Starfin was summoned to a military tribunal. Starfin was preemptively denied Japanese citizenship and was told that Japanese military intelligence would be following him from here on out. Starfin was told that if he so much as looked into the Kanda River on his journey between Suidobashi Station and Karakuen Stadium, he'd be arrested. And if he spent too much time looking at the flags in the stadiums during the game, he'd be arrested afterwards. This was because the Kanda River was an important transport route for military equipment, and they were worried that by knowing the wind conditions, Starfin would be providing weather reports to Soviet agents. Need I remind you that this was a man who came from a strictly anti-communist family and had zero reason to support the Soviet Union. In 1940, Starfin would attempt to alleviate suspicion by changing his name to Hiroshi Suda. There were conflicting reports as to why he did this. Some say that he was forced to, some say that Nagoya Baseball Club GM Masashi Akimine recommended he do it because he was scared that Starfin would get arrested by the military police if he didn't. Regardless, Starfin kept going, picking up his second straight MVP award. But in 1941, things would go from bad to worse. In a game against the Nankai Baseball Club, Starfin was seen sweating profusely on the mound. Despite this, he kept going. But after the game, it was revealed that he was pitching through a fever. After recording a body temperature of over 40 degrees Celsius, he was rushed to hospital. It turns out that not only did he have the flu, but he had pleurisy, an inflammation of the lungs. He was in such bad shape that he nearly died. Doctors even told him that he might not be able to play professional baseball ever again. Starfin ignored them, took the mound in 1942, and went 26-8 with a 1.12 ERA. Then the pleurisy came back and sidelined him for most of the 1943 season. Midway through the 1944 season, he was deported to a concentration camp in Karowizawa, a small town in Nagano. In order to quell the suspicion and anger this would cause among Giants fans, the official reason given by the club was he was isolated due to illness. 
Away from everything he loved, Starfin began to drink heavily. He gained a lot of weight and became fairly belligerent, especially towards his wife Lena. When the war ended, an old rival showed back up, Alexander Boliviov. Boliviov and Starfin had both been high school baseball stars in Hokkaido in the 1930s, and while Starfin had become a pro baseball star, Boliviov and his family had moved to the United States. He'd return as an interpreter for the US Army, and Lena soon left Victor for him, leaving their son George behind. To say Starfin didn't take this well was a bit of an understatement. Instead of returning to the Giants, Starfin instead signed with the Pacific Baseball Club in 1946, joining the Giants' former manager, Sadayoshi Fujimoto. Even though Starfin was out of shape and had the worst season of his career, he still put up a 2.11 ERA and was above replacement level, while also picking up his 200th win. Starfin stayed with the club for one more season before he and Fujimoto left the Nataio Robins to join the Dai Stars. While he still hadn't lost weight, Fujimoto did what he could to keep him in check, and Starfin had remarried to a half-Russian woman named Tanya Takahashi. Starfin became more of a showy pitcher. He shifted away from his once dominant fastball to an arsenal of breaking pitches, vastly improving his strikeout rate. The genesis of this would be 1949, where he led the Stars to a third place finish, leading the team with 8.1 war. However, both he and the team were unable to improve on this, and Starfin would steadily get less and less playing time. He would open up a salon and pharmacy with his wife in the Minato Ward neighborhood of Aoyama to try and get ready for life after baseball, but in the meantime, he kept going. He signed with the expansion Tombo Unions in 1954 on the recommendation of Fujimoto, and slowly turned into more of a player coach. Still, he desired nothing more than to keep playing, even going so far as to lose 25 kilograms in the 1954-55 offseason. Starfin would become the first pitcher in Japanese professional baseball to win 300 games on July 28, 1955 at Kawasaki Stadium against the Gintetsu Pearls, in front of a mere thousand people. Except, no. Thanks to rules dictating how wins were scored pre-war, it was only considered his 298th win. Under those rules, his 300th win would come on September 4th against the Dai Stars. Although, for some reason, people say it was on the 9th. According to game-by-game -game records I have access to, it was on the 4th. Regardless, at Nishikyogoku Stadium in Kyoto, Starfin was finally officially credited with his 300th win. When asked by the press what his next milestone was, Starfin said he wanted to get 2,000 strikeouts before calling it a career. He never got that opportunity. Starfin's 7-23 record was deemed not good enough for any team to want to touch him. The union's manager had cut him at the end of the year because he felt he was undermining him, and despite Starfin saying that he would pitch for free, no team took him up on that offer. What makes this more sad is that by modern metrics, the 39-year-old Starfin was actually a pretty solid pitcher. While his ERA wasn't great, he still carried an above-average FIP, and was by all means a back-of-the-rotation caliber arm, or even a solid bullpen piece. But this was the 1950s, not the 2020s. Nobody knew. And thus, Starfin was out of a job. Starfin initially wanted to try and find any job he could around baseball, even offering to be a ball boy, but no team took him up on the offer. He eventually went back to running his pharmacy. To make matters worse, his mother passed away. Starfin had been growing more and more distant to those around him, and took to drinking heavily again. On January 12, 1957, Starfin attended the opening for a bowling alley run by a friend. He was already drunk by that point, but insisted that he would keep driving. He had a high school reunion to attend later that day. He and a few former classmates piled into his beloved 1941 Chevy Deluxe and set off, until suddenly Starfin stopped the car and told them to take the train, saying he had something to do, and he'd meet them at the reunion later that day. Later that day, Starfin's car collided with a streetcar near Minshaku Station at Setagaya. Bystanders rushed to pull Starfin from the car, and he was quickly loaded into an ambulance, but it was too late. He was pronounced dead when he arrived at the hospital. He would be buried in his wife's hometown of Yokote in Akita Prefecture. He would become the first player to be honored with a baseball funeral where dozens of his former teammates gathered around to share stories about their time playing with him. It made one thing clear. They had lost a brother. The second inductee class for the Japanese Baseball Hall of Fame in 1960 had just one member, the first to be inducted solely for what he did on the field, Victor Starfin. In 1984, a bronze statue of Starfin was erected at Asahikawa Municipal Stadium, or as it's known to the locals, Starfin Stadium. Victor Starfin remains the greatest player to ever come out of Hokkaido, and despite his wins record falling to Takahiko Besho in 1960, his 83 career complete game shutouts will likely never be beaten by any NPB pitcher. 
and it stands as the third most in all of Major Pro Baseball, trailing only Walter Johnson and Pete Alexander. The tale of Victor Starfin is a tragic one, one marked by war, sickness, heartbreak, and depression. And even though he eventually succumbed to it, Victor Starfin fought like hell, and doing so became a legend. As of writing this video, Starfin is the only player born in Russia to suit up for a Japanese professional baseball team, and is the second last to do so in all of Major Pro Baseball. But to the fans, Starfin wasn't the Russian. They called him Aoi Mei Nihonji, the blue-eyed Japanese. A quick thank you to my patrons, Juan Jose Sanchez Bracamontes, The Frilled Shark, Julian Willie, Ryan Fox, Lucas Boya, G, Uia Bird, Mentasmic, Tom Musa, Nat Lang, the unofficial NPB Discord server, Eric Cooper, and Anthony Pang. And to everyone else, thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, feed the algorithm. And as always, I've been Gaijin Baseball. Peace. Oh, no.